Is this the best PMR446 radio? Normally I'd never make a suggestion or claim like that because I'd say there are just far too many PMR446 radios out there to possibly know which one is the best. However, this radio has a feature that only a select few PMR446 radios have. A feature that I think a radio needs these days to be shortlisted as one of the best PMR446 radios. And that feature is the DPMR digital mode. Digital modes on radios like these are a relatively new technology. For a long time, you could only buy PMR446 radios that worked in the analog FM mode. With analog, the audio gradually gets noisier as the signal gets weaker. Eventually, the signal is so weak on analog that you might be able to hear that the person on the other radio is talking, but not understand what they're saying. With digital, the signal will be clear right up until it stops working. So that analog signal that you could hear but not understand would probably be perfectly understandable on digital. Here's a clip from one of my other videos to demonstrate how digital really cleans up a signal. There are two digital modes that PMR446 radios are allowed to use, DMR and DPMR. But DPMR has better range than DMR, so I don't really recommend anyone buys PMR446 radios that use DMR. Another benefit of having the DPMR mode is that not many people are using DPMR radios, so you should find it quite easy to find a free channel, and your communications are going to be more private too because someone would have to have a DPMR radio to hear you. If someone with an analog only radio is on the same frequency and tries to listen to you, then they'd just hear the digital data of your transmission. Yet to a digital radio, it would sound like this. On digital mode, one, two, three, four, five. What is the range of this radio? This is a really common question people ask when they're looking to buy walkie-talkies. But it's also a difficult question to answer because the range depends on multiple factors. The biggest factor is what obstructions are between the two radios. Are you going to be using them in the middle of a city full of high-rise buildings? They probably won't get very far because things like metal and concrete block signals quite well. Are you going to be using them in a completely open and flat field? They'll probably work quite far because there's nothing around to block the signal. So to give you an answer on the range question, it's anything from about 50 meters, if you're using the radio in an underground bunker, up to about 100 kilometers, if you're talking from one mountaintop to another. For typical use, I'd say when using them outside in the countryside on flat terrain, you can expect around 3 to 5 kilometers. Compared to other PMR446 models, DPMR radios like this one, assuming they're well designed, should get slightly better range when in the digital mode because of the narrower bandwidth channel used by DPMR. For the same amount of power, a narrower channel will get better range than a wider channel. And the DPMR mode uses only half the bandwidth of an analog transmission. In my testing, I found this radio to be pretty good in terms of range when compared to other radios. It's not going to get as good range as a licensed business radio because these only output half a watt of power, the maximum allowed on PMR446 radios whereas licensed radios usually output four or five watts. But the benefit of these is that they're license free, so you're not only avoiding that extra cost of buying the license, 
but also the hassle of having to arrange a license and make sure your radio is programmed to the right frequency you've been assigned. With these radios you can just take them out of the box and start using them straight away. Let's have a look at the radio body. This radio is clearly aimed at business use not only because of the price, which is on the high end for PMR446 radios, but also because it uses the same body as the NX1300NE3, which is a licensed radio. I think the build quality is good. It doesn't feel like it would break easily, and it's a lot better quality than the cheap radios aimed at consumers. The accessory and programming connector on the side is the standard Kenwood type, this is good because it means there's a wide range of cheap accessories you can use with this radio and the programming cable is cheap too. On the other hand, it's not a waterproof connector, so you're meant to keep the cover on it to stop the radio from getting damaged if it rains. Speaking of rain, the radio is IP54 and IP55 rated, which essentially means you should be fine to use it in any sort of rain and the radio will be fine but if you drop it in a lake, it will probably break. On top of the radio is the status LED that shows when you're receiving, transmitting, scanning, or various other functions of the radio. There's also the channel selector knob, which goes from 1 to 16. Next to that is the volume control, which you turn up to turn on the radio. I like that the volume knob is quite stiff to turn because it stops you from accidentally knocking it and turning the volume down so low you can't hear it. There's also the antenna which is fixed and can't be changed as is required on PMR446 radios. On the left side there's a push to talk button which is surrounded by a slightly raised area in the casing to stop you from transmitting by accident. Below that are two programmable buttons. These can be programmed for various functions like changing zone, turning scan on and off, monitor mode and many more. The radio comes with a 7.4 volt battery rated for 1880 mAh or 14Wh, which gives it a claimed battery life of 15 hours. That 15 hour battery life is calculated based on 5% of the time transmitting, 5% receiving and 90% in standby or in other words, turned on but not actively receiving a transmission. That works out to about 45 minutes of time transmitting, another 45 minutes receiving, and then 13.5 hours in standby. If you were talking and listening more than that, then the battery life would be shorter, but in my usage of the radio, it never ran out over a normal day's use. The radio does have a feature to warn you when the battery starts to get low, so you won't just have a radio that suddenly dies without any warning. There's one thing I don't like about the body of the radio, which is how the battery goes in. It's secured with a latch, and this lets the battery move back and forth slightly in use. It's not enough to affect the operation of the radio, but I just find it mildly annoying since none of my other radios seem to have this issue. A few years ago you were only allowed to use 8 analogue channels and 16 digital channels. The law was changed to allow for 16 analogue channels and 32 digital channels, double the number of before, and this radio has the capability to use all of those which is good because some radios haven't caught up yet and still only use the old 8 analog frequencies and 16 digital frequencies if they are digital models. On the analog channels, the radio has CTCSS and DCS, which is a standard feature for PMR446 radios these days. One thing to be aware of is that some radios misleadingly advertise that they have 900 channels or some silly unrealistic number. This is actually false advertising and they're counting each CTCSS tone or DCS code and channel combination. In reality, the CTCSS and DCS just filter out other people on the channel who don't have the same code set. If you're transmitting at the same time as someone else who has a different code, then you'll still interfere with each other, so it's not like being on a separate channel. 
In digital mode, there's a similar system to CTCSS and DCS to filter out other groups on the same frequency. It's called common ID. And if another group is using the same frequency as you on digital, but has a different common ID, then you won't hear them and they won't hear you. But since there are 32 digital channels, it's usually better to just try and pick a channel nobody else is using anyway. If you want to be able to communicate with a different group on digital, then the radio does have a self-programming mode that lets you change the common ID so you can set it to match theirs. Each radio's manual usually lists the default channel settings, including common ID for the digital channels. So if you wanted to be able to talk to someone using an ICOM radio, for example, you could go and look up what common ID the ICOM uses by default on a certain channel and program this radio to use the same one. That is, assuming the ICOM radio hadn't been reprogrammed to use a different common ID. In analog mode, the radios have a really nice feature called squelch tail elimination. This stops you from hearing that annoying loud squelch crash at the end of every transmission. Testing an analog radio without squelch tail elimination. One, two, three. Testing an analog radio with squelch tail elimination. One, two, three. It also has a scrambler in analog mode. This only offers very basic privacy and is pretty easy to unscramble, so it shouldn't be used for anything serious like transferring customer data over the radio. It just makes it a tiny bit more difficult for people to listen in on your conversations. Here's what the scrambler sounds like to a radio without a scrambler, or with the scrambler turned off. And here's what it sounds like to a radio with a scrambler. Testing the scrambler functionality. One, two, three, four, five. On digital channels, the radio has automatic gain control, which is a handy feature that tries to level out the audio of everyone, so everyone is at about the same volume. The radio has a self-programming feature that lets you change the frequency each channel is set to, along with the CTCSS or DCS on analog channels, or the common ID on digital channels. If you want to change any of the more advanced settings, then you need a programming cable, which you can get for about £5, just by searching online for a Baofeng UV5R programming cable, and the software, which unfortunately isn't free and costs around £20. I also really like that the radio has a monitor mode, that lets you hear everything on your channel. This works on both analog and digital channels. So if someone else is transmitting with a different common ID on a digital channel, you'll be able to hear it if you have monitor mode on. The audio of the radio is good. The speaker sounds good and is plenty loud enough for any normal application, except if you're doing something that requires hearing protection. But to be honest, this radio goes so loud you'd probably need hearing protection if you were going to use it on the loudest volume. The analog audio is a lot quieter than the digital audio, which can be a nuisance if you're scanning analog and digital channels, or if you often need to switch between them. But for most people, I don't think this will be an issue because most users tend to just pick one channel and stay there. There's one other minor issue I found with this radio, which involves the dual PTT mode. This feature lets you program two channels and use the normal PTT to transmit on one of them and this button for the other. I found that the digital audio doesn't sound as good when this feature is on. It sounds like it has a high bit error rate, but this is another thing that won't affect the vast majority of people using the radio. So I'd say it's not something to worry about unless you specifically wanted the radios for this feature. So to answer the question I posed at the start of the video, is this the best PMR446 radio? Well, I think this is one of the best radios you can buy right now. There are a few other DPMR models I would also consider, 
and I haven't tested all those, so I can't definitively say which one is the best. But this is a high quality radio with good range, thanks to the digital mode, good battery life, and clear audio. It's definitely a good choice, and I'd say it's at least in the top 5 PMR446 radios you can buy new today. If you enjoyed this video, please help me out by clicking the like button. And don't forget that if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can also subscribe.